Well, as we know, the federal vaccine mandates have become supercharged politically and uh, have been used by political parties to bludgeon each other during the pandemic. Let's bring in three members of parliament now to debate the latest changes announced by the government today. Francesco Sorbara is a Liberal MP. Michael Barrett is the health critic for the official opposition Conservatives. And Taylor Backrack is the transport critic for the NDP. It's good to see you all. Um, Mr. Sorbara, let me start with you. Uh, tell me about the timing of these decisions made today. As recently as yesterday, your government was still defending the mandates. Now you're dropping them. What's changed? Uh, thank you, Peter. And well, I don't want to use the word dropping. We're actually suspending the mandates. That's what we've announced today. So we announced that the vaccine mandates will be suspended. Uh, this is part of a transition, uh, uh, you know, really adapting to public health and what public health measures have done and what the data we're getting back. We're seeing lower hosp hospitalizations. We're seeing, obviously, we've reached a, a very high coverage level in, in the country as Canadians have done the right thing and, and gotten vaccinated almost to a 90 percent level. So obviously, as we follow the data, as we follow the science, we made sure Canadians have done the right thing. Vaccines mandates have been very right. effective. Uh, we've now reached a point now where we can suspend them and transition and move forward in a very prudent and safe manner where we protect, continue to protect Canadians, Canadian travellers, and right. those individuals that work at airports and on airlines. Right, but Mr. So Mr. Barrow, we've known for six months that uh, the two doses, uh, we'll go back to Mr. Sabar here, we've known for six months that two doses aren't sufficient against Omicron, so nothing has really changed. Oh, yeah. uh, all right, this is for Mr. Sabara. All right. oh, sorry, Peter, I, I think I lost you. Yeah, there. we lost. There's a, we got a bit of a problem here, but uh, let me continue with Mr. So, Mr. Sabara, look, nothing, nothing's really changed in, in the science during the last six months. We've known that two doses, uh, you know, uh, don't work to, to, to stop Omicron. But, so I'm wondering why it's taken so long to lift those mandates. You know, again, you know, the way I like to look at it is, and I, and I use, a, use a term of responsible leadership of being cautious and prudent during a pandemic. And that's what we have effectively done. And we've done the same thing with the vaccine mandates where we've looked at it and said, you know, they were very effective. We continue to receive the public health data from the public health officials, including Dr. Teresa Tam, and we take that into consideration. And now we've reached a point where we can suspend those, suspend the measures that we've introduced, but continue to be monitor okay. the situation and continue to move forward as well, such. Let me move to you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, what's your view on the timing of this decision? Why do you believe the government made this call now and should it have made it sooner? Well, the government's not been following uh, medical science for some time. This was a political decision and, and we've been very clear uh, in our asks of the government for several months. And that's that they provide uh, the benchmarks that Canadians needed to hit with uh, vaccination rates and community transmission and all of the other epidemiological factors. And they've been uh, unwilling, they've refused to provide that information. And uh, as you said, as recently as yesterday, the government said, the science said we need to keep the mandates in place. And then today they said they've suspended them. And so uh, Mr. Cerbera said that, you know, vaccination rates are nearly 90% in Canada. Um, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, you know, to what end uh, they would be reintroduced. If they're, are they looking to close that other 10% gap? So we've got big concerns about, about this announcement because it's not going to provide the confidence that Canadians need to, to continue to travel. And, and it's just really important to note, Peter, that um, up until today, there are people who've been missing uh, births, uh, you know, funerals. They've been, missing, uh, they've been missing their loved ones, missing out on life because of these unscientific mandates. And the government hasn't provided any data to back them up. All right. Mr. Backrack, uh, what's your reaction to the decision today to uh, suspend these federal mandates? Well, for two years, Canadians have been doing what's required of them to fight this pandemic. They've been getting vaccinated in record numbers. They've been wearing masks. They've been staying home when they're sick. And as the pandemic has gone on, they've seen the provinces adapt their approach. And so there have been more and more people asking questions about consistency, asking questions about the federal rules and why they're in place. We've been asking those questions as well for over a month now in the House of Commons, and it's been extremely frustrating to hear the evasiveness from the Liberal government, the refusal to explain how these measures work and what the science, the scientific evidence is that backs them up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as recently as a couple of days ago, we were in the House of Commons asking these questions and, and getting absolute refusal uh, in from the other side. So uh, now we have this announcement, uh, all of a sudden, it's certainly going to be welcomed by people that it affects. But I think those questions still remain, which is, when did things change? When did public health first advise the government that the mandates were no longer necessary? And uh, how long have people had to wait to get to today? Or was this simply a, a political announcement 
Um, but at the same time, it comes back to we need to be following public health and the government has a responsibility to explain the science. All right. Um, Mr. Sabara, what about that? Uh, you know, you know, there are lots of questions today at the news conference with your cabinet colleagues uh, about exactly that. What brought uh, the federal government, what brought cabinet to, to this moment to say, OK, uh, now we've seen enough to to want to, you know, suspend uh, these vaccine mandates without uh, really telling Canadians exactly what's behind the decision. Well, one thing I do, I do want to address right off the bat is, you know, uh, MP Baird, who I have a great deal of respect for, stated that Canadians may not have the confidence to travel. I would actually uh, beg to differ. I would say Canadians are traveling at very high levels. They, they, everybody wants to go on a vacation from, from what I've seen, and people are traveling because, uh, and in fact, of the measures we put in place to ensure that travelers are safe, uh, that people are vaccinated when they get in airplanes at the highest levels we can get to, uh, that Canadians can travel uh, domestically and, and, and know that they're safe, that people right, working right, at but the you're, But you're saying all can, hang on, but you're saying all that's well. but you're saying all that's changing now. All of a sudden, all kinds of unvaccinated people are going to be traveling in airplanes with people who are vaccinated. Well, you know, when I okay, sorry, there's a, a slight time delay there in terms of your question, Peter. Um, what, you know, what I say in terms of this is again, we've suspended the mandates. This is showing adaptability in a transition moving forward. Uh, we I applaud that. At the same time, we need to be cautious. We are continuing to follow the health and medical advice. With regards to, you know, two doses or anything in, in further, there has been some comments. Obviously, that's under review. We'll mm -hmm. continue to review the science, and that's what we've done all along. Okay. And there's no, Peter, and to my colleagues, there's no perfect time in terms of ma managing uh, you know, wishing away COVID or a magic day when you can stop it or not stop it. You know, we have to be realistic about this. We're, you know, We've no, had but, but, but I'm not. I, but I'm in, not sure. This year versus I'm not sure that's what your. I'm not sure that's what your colleagues are saying. What they're saying is show us the information that led you to the decisions you made today. But, Mr. Barrett, uh, the government's warning that if there's a, a new variant uh, this fall, if there's another wave, uh, these mandates could be reinstated. How, how easily do you think, the government could reinstate mandates if there's a new variant or a wider outbreak? Government restrictions have been crushing small businesses. They've been really hurting individuals, families, for some of the reasons that I mentioned before, people being able, unable to travel for important milestones. Um, so it's going to be incredibly difficult. It's been an incredibly difficult time for Canadians waiting to get to this point. We don't know why the government made the decision today, and, and it would be, um, we wouldn't know what what they were using to guide them to make them in the future. So um, they're not lifting uh, the mandates. Uh, you know, as Mr. Sorbera said, they're pausing them. And, and that's, you know, when we don't know what, what the, we haven't seen the data, we don't know where the goalposts are. So um, it's really tough to say we're gonna be, where we're going to be, you know, in a couple of months. But um, this is the question that I raised about the confidence that Canadians are gonna have. You know, do you open a new business this year? Or you know what, I'm not gonna do that because uh, I don't know if the government's gonna put, you know, new mandates it's in place, lockdowns, mandatory boosters, we, you know, we, we don't know, and they're not saying. Mr. Backrack, what's your view on this? Mandates, uh, as we've said, have been very divisive. Having lifted those mandates, uh, would you support bringing them back if we get another wave or another variant? Well, Peter, we need to follow public health advice, and really this comes down to trust. It comes down to trust that needs to be built on transparency. Near the beginning of the pandemic, the government was doing a much better job of explaining how things work, explaining the health science and why certain measures were being chosen. And, and frankly, I think that the, the last couple of months of them absolutely stonewalling very reasonable questions has eroded public trust and puts us as a country in a very difficult situation when it comes to responding to future public health crises. We need the government to be more transparent and we need them to answer reasonable questions so that people can have faith in our process. All right. Um, Mr. Sabara, if the, if the government's objective, and that was stated today by cabinet ministers as well, is to get more people vaccinated, get more people boosted, um, how does relaxing the rules, uh, suspending the rules as you've done, as you've done today, encourage people to get more shots? Well, um, Peter, thank you for that question. What I would say is, you know, we need to encourage uh, all Canadians to get that third booster shot. We know it's very effective. We know it's very efficient. At the, at the same time, we've, we've seen the public health data come back to us and we've seen the hospitalizations go down. We've seen the 90% rate, so which is a very, very good thing. We've seen the provinces adjust their, their measures. And, and you know what? We've followed public health guidance and the science behind it and the data, and that is why we're suspending right. the mandates now. Ms. I, you know, in, in terms oh. of having a public health campaign to get the booster shop up, 
booster shot up, you know, that's something I encourage uh, fully to do. So I tell my constituents, please okay. get your booster shot. Mr. Barrett. Uh, and, and I think that's that's going to be okay. something we need to do. Mr. Barrett, did, what's, what do you think the connection is here between restrictions imposed by governments and trying to push people to get vaccinated? What have we learned about the last number of months? Well, you know, the, the, the problem is, is that the government hasn't shared with us um, any of the data. And so, um, you know, so canadians are you know that confidence is slipping uh the you know the number of people who had two shots was you know in the mid 80 uh, 80 percent mm -hmm. range only about half of canadians uh, got a booster dose the government has done um, a very poor job of communicating to canadians uh, what the effects of uh, naturally acquired immunity are as an example on the time that one should wait after getting you know uh you know catching covid before if they should choose to get a booster dose so um, there's also no testing capacity, so people would be able to um, to see uh, and demonstrate that they have that natu right. naturally acquired immunity. So um, th this is really about evidence. Uh, we heard that from, from Mr. Backrack that the government did a better job early on trying to communicate with Canadians. It seems that they've checked out, and uh, and now we're just going to be surprised when uh, when they want to make a political announcement. The final word to you on this, Mr. Backrack, in terms of, uh, I, I guess, the, the challenge of getting more Canadians boosted at this point. Yeah, vaccines work, and I encourage everyone who is eligible to get two doses and the booster if, if they qualify. Um, at the same time, we need the government to explain the objective behind its different public health measures. Okay. And if the objective is to encourage more people to get vaccinated, then we need them to say that and be clear with the data and show progress over time. And that's where they've been falling down. But right. we're, we're not out of this yet, Peter. We, we've still got a lot of work to do together as a country, and I hope that we can get that trust back. We can... Uh, show the transparency that's necessary to move forward together. All right, gentlemen, uh, thank you all for your time tonight. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Thanks so much. Thank you.